change has come to America. Regardless of your political view, the election of the first African-American president has completely changed the political landscape forever. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. The streets were celebrating harder than anybody in America. Just to be able to be alive to see this. I didn't know if it happened in my lifetime, but I definitely didn't think it would be this early. The 60s and 70s had Top 40 Radio. The 80s have MTV. I want my MTV. I want my MTV. MTV for me was television apartheid. This kind of myopic view that it has to be white for it to be right. MTV was really backwards to begin with. Uh, you know, and I say backwards as a way of not saying uh, racist. These clips are called videos, and they have launched groups with names like Men at Work, The Stray Cats, and Duran Duran. Their programming policy was the mirror of FM radio policy, which is to say uh, they played almost nothing but white artists for the first several years of their existence. There's one group that's not happy with MTV, many black artists who have been told their music doesn't fit the format. She's a very kinky girl. That's what's happening. We're, we're, we're being sat in the back of the bus television style. MTV wouldn't play those videos. They were too urban. They were too underground. Most of the songs that I loved weren't on MTV. And it was a horrible time for, for black artists. And it started to change with the advent of Prince and especially Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's Billie Jean was the first music video by a black artist to get heavy rotation on MTV. Artists that got to be so huge that you couldn't deny putting them on MTV. Michael Jackson. There was something about Rapper's Delight. Obviously, it's over. Good times. We all know that if we know our music history. I have such vivid memories of, like, driving in the back of my sister's car and looking at New York and just, like, listening to the music. And for me, it was like, when I grow up, this is where, this is where I'm going to exist. Like, I exist through the music. Her national television debut. Her single is called Vision of Love. This is Mariah Carey. Give it up. For you. Where do the, feel so the biggest point in my life was Arsenio Hall allowing me to be on his show. Oh, Arsenio Hall was a big deal, man. It was like we would go in the studio and make records, and you know, if it came out good, we would say, okay, man, this is gonna get us on Arsenio. Like the roast is ruined and the boss is coming to dinner. There wasn't a suggestion in any of these shows that there were any race problems, that there were any problems with the economy, that we didn't have health problems. So it seemed to me the times were screaming for some reality. I think Norman Lear is a very critical figure to Tanning because Norman, for some odd reason, uh, was culturally curious enough to understand, uh, to put a lens on African-American culture. I watched Good Times, I watched The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons, for sure, Good Times. Good Times, The Jeffersons. The first time I heard N.W.A. was actually in a white kid's house. And it was a little, um, uncomfortable. And I think people Everybody know where it's at. It's right here. Yo, Yo MTV, MTV Raps. Yo! I approached MTV in 1986 and asked them if they would be interested in doing a, a hip-hop show. MTV's like, Ralph, middle America's not ready for hip-hop. And I was like, this is 1986. I was at the Fresh Fest. There's white people there. Run DMC is hot right now. What do you mean Middle America is not ready for it? He says, no, but it can't be on the television set yet. It's too early. It's not time for that yet. I totally did not agree with him. I was like, there's no way. You're wrong. People were hungry for hip hop. People wanted to hear this music. And you know, you can only stifle something for so, for so long. 